going on that I wasn't invited to. And I would just be more inspired to play my guitar and dream about someday going to the party. And I've been to the party before. But you always want to go to the party. And when you don't go to the party, it used to sting, now it inspires. And I'm taking all the energy from that that I know is happening on that side of the world. And I'm just sitting here playing my guitar, having a friggin' blast with it. Um, thinking about next year's party. And I think that's the contract of being a musician or an artist. Sometimes you get invited to the party and sometimes you don't. But even if you don't get invited to the party, you should go back to your instrument and create as if you got to fight your way back to it. I dig it. I enjoy doing it. Also, there's another party going on in town called NAM, which is the big convention for music instruments. Namely, I mean guitars, pretty much. I mean, primarily guitars, although there are lots of other instruments there. So my Instagram feed has been full, chock full of guitar playing, guitars, riffing, riffage, licks, solos, uh, shredding, ripping, that made me um, pick up my guitar and maybe want to do the opposite of what I heard all day on Instagram, which is not to take anything away from anybody because when you're trying a guitar out, you got to overplay. You got to like, I'm sorry for saying overplay. You have to, my Uber's here. You have to, it's, it's a great joke whenever you hear sirens. Um, you have to display what the guitar does. So you, you, what's the word that's not overplaying? What's a kind way? <laughs> you gotta demonstrate. You have to floor it, you know. Um, so I took some guitars out. I don't really have a ton around me, but they're in various states of setup. Never learned how to set a guitar up. I'm on the other side of the guitar. I don't want to be on both sides of the guitar. I don't want to both play the guitar and w worry about the truss rod adjustment knowing that I could sit down and like take the neck off. I just don't. I think I speak for all guitar players when I say I can't be on that side of the guitar. Anyway, um, I got my, uh, my skate guitar here, which I really, really like. It's uh, got a Floyd Rose on it which presents some really interesting um, pluses and minuses, things to work around on the guitar. So Floyd Rose is what this is, it's the tremolo. I'm gonna also speak to people who don't play guitar because I can't imagine there's 3,400 guitar players watching. This is called a floating tremolo. That means the guitar is on springs and I can either pull the springs, stretch them this way, which would bring the tone up, or I can stretch them the other way which is what the bar is for, a whammy bar. Now, because this tension is so precariously hung, and it's not just like stapled against the wood and that's your, right, you know, you lock it down and you're at the same pitch every time, meaning you, you know what I'm saying, this thing floats around. So if you do, for instance, you'll hear if, if I bend one string and hold the other, this first note will go out of tune. So listen. I'm bending the string next to it and you can hear. That's a tricky thing about a Floyd Rose, is that it's the, the intonation of it's kind of funny. If you're going for a certain thing, you don't know how to kind of play around it. So again, you get these, the tuning can be kind of off there. But what's really, really fun are all the ways that you can use a whammy bar for pitch manipulation. Um, now, everybody knows there's the dive bomb, the sort of, you know, all the way down. And if I do that, I'll come back up and be out of tune. Also, I think these are pains in the ass because it's locked up here. When they say it's a locking system, this is actually locked. I can't tune these because I tuned it before at one point, locked it down, and then you do the fine tuning from these screws right here. It's a nightmare because I don't have the Allen wrench with me. Anyway, you can use the, the whammy bar for a lot of different uh, applications. And I like to use it for a lot more subtle things. So. I like, a, I like a tremolo set so that when you pull up, it gets to about a half step. So instead of going, you can go. As opposed to. Now inside of that, there's two ways to do it. Because it's a spring and it's floating, that's what they call a floating tremolo, 
you can actually snap it and get that which means it's going before it settles in or you can go which means you don't let it fall out of your hand or and now you heard me go I can go it's okay I can do it like that with my finger or I can go and that's where you get sort of these John McLaughlin, Jeff Beck things out. Right? So you can do that. Oh, here's another way that you can um, add, you can do a pitch. So I'm going to show you all the ways that you can add a half step to a lick. So the first way is just fretting it, right? Or you can bend it. You can do this with an A bar. Or you can tap it, right? I'm a big fan of tapping right there. Now, most people who tap, tap all the time. When you know how to tap a little bit and you throw it in just as a taste, it's great. Same thing with the whammy bar. Now, it's very hard for guitar players to get their head around having the, the option of a whammy bar and not using it every time. I'm just as guilty as any guitar player in the world of having it here and reaching for it. And you can tell that you're too stuck on a whammy bar by switching guitars to one that doesn't have one and your hand is going for a whammy bar that's not there. So, when you can... You can do that. So, we just add that in. Um, you can also tap after a bend, which I really, really like. What? That means... Now we're at the five chord, now we're in the, the E. I missed it, right? Cause... Right? These are the, you know I love the microtones. Here's another thing to practice. Last time I did this, I think I was a little all over the place. I said I was going to teach, and I didn't really teach. I sort of just flossing the whole time. Here's a really great practice. Everyone's always practicing playing in minor pentatonic and bending, right? But... Practice bending from a minor into a major. So that, that was going in from a minor third to a major third. So now most people go, which isn't really a band, it's sort of a, a adding a flavor to. But which is an A. Right? That'll teach you a lot about getting your bend in the right place because a major third is completely unforgiving. Bending in minor is much more forgiving. You can kind of go as, as crazy as you want to go, but there's only one right way to play a major third over something. That's too high, too, too sharp. That's also what gives a slide sound to stuff. And if you want to bend everything up, you can also do this math where you just go a step below everything and sound a little more like a slide. Right? So you can bend up to stuff. You can also make mistakes and bend after mistakes. If you're an A. You know, maybe I wanted to go and I went. If you're playing alone, just throw it into make it a four chord, you know. It's really about following your ear around. Um, so that's what I do is sit here as we, as you know, and just find these ways to simplify as much as I possibly can. And we'll get out of A, we'll go to D, you know.
We'll add we'll that major third. We're bending to it. I think is that my uh, major notes inside of a minor pentatonic are so refreshing. King of it, Jerry Garcia. Um, but, but but really blending your major with your minor is so refreshing. If you're in like the, the you know the 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 tendency is to go. But if you throw a major third in there, right? It's another third. Ah, uh, right. That's where you get that really pleasing. a tap. Uh, we can do right. Just one. Right. Give me a whammy, she said. any tips buy one that's set up right it'll hurt your finger fingers a little bit but not as much as a, um, one that's not set up right will um, that sounds like a good thank you I could never play Jason Becker stuff it's so friggin good 
in your atmosphere tuning, how did you come up with it? Great question. I think it's the same tuning, and I could be wrong, but I think it's the same tuning as Daughters by Pearl Jam. I could be wrong, but for some reason I feel like that's where I got it. I don't, th did I come up with myself? If, I, if it's not the tuning for Daughters by Pearl Jam, I came up with it myself. Um, tips on playing bass lines while playing. Yeah, what a wonderful question. So. Whenever you're playing, just understand, well, bass, there's a couple ways to look at it. Um, playing bass lines like, like walking bass lines, you know. Right. That's sort of just walking the roots up around, so whatever the chords are, you sort of walk the roots up. But you also learn it. It's a little bit like Dance Dance Revolution. It's not really sort of playing off the top of your head. But understanding what key you're in every time you solo is a really good way to keep the bass. I, I, like whenever I play a song that I don't know, but someone goes like, play this song, I always think about the bass first. Because um, the bass will define everything. It'll tell you what the chords are, it'll tell you you got to understand the root. I feel like that's, that can't be stressed enough. You have to understand the root of things. So I'm always aware of where I am. So I'm, we'll pick a different key. We'll pick C. I can add this bass line. I kind of see the... So what is that? That's one, minor, th minor three, minor third, but still four, seven. spelling of that chord. So I'm always thinking the bass line the whole time. This is kind of messy, but kind of cool at the same time. If you, it, it, It's also a good way to accompany yourself when you play. Now, Maybe I could do that in a way that was a little less tweaky, you know?
Here are the good, ooh. Hear how that major third comes in over the minor? So I can bring. Listen to that third. I think I did it wrong. That's it. The major third is your friend. I'm gonna go back to the minor, you'll hear the difference. So that's the baseline thing over the, over, uh, playing over baseline, I should say. What else? What else do you want to know? Huh? Huh, y'all? Y'all? Yeah, it really, as long as you understand where the roots are, you can get around. It's just a matter of getting around fast enough, you know? So the, the math just keeps changing. Whatever key I'm in, the frets in my mind light up different colors, you know? Carbonated water. Who impresses me? Doyle Bramble the second. He is, he impresses me every note he plays. That's a deep, deep, deep cat. Doyle Bramble the second. Yep. Yep. That is a deep cat. Tips for getting out of the blue scale box. 100%. So for people who don't know the blue scale box, for whatever reason the guitar is tuned the way that it is, it lends itself to the blues scale very ergonomically. So the reason people call it the box, for those who don't know if I'm st I'll still stay in C, watch this fret right here. This is all the same. I can actually bar it. Which is actually kind of cool. Never do that before. So it tends to, and then with bending, I'm playing it super rudimentary. Now you, you added this, that's a blue scale, but even just doing pentatonic. So, I'll show you where all the pieces are. You throw a third in like we're talking about. You throw the, the flat fifth. So, but even still, that's what we call boxy. First way out, major third. Um, you've got, well, you've got your stuff up here, you know. A lot of people go there. Again, because ergonomically, it's sort of like the edge of the wave. You, you, you add that onto the box up top. So you've got, add the minor, the minor, the flat fifth. And then add. So now those are sort of the, the wings of the house. I always go, kind of like a, um, a minor set, a minor second really. You'll hear this on, it's very vultures like. Which is like, you know, like breaking through the ground floor of that, that box. So I would always think about break through that side of it, not up here. Even just that. Seven 
three major. Three major, what, uh, augmented? That. One minor. Four. Four minor. Let's do, uh, five. Oh, oh seven. Actually, what a one. So in a way, that's not one. That's minor six. So I'm, there are some music people who just flipped out because I was looking at it wrong. That's actually this is actually you can look at it as a minor one diatonic, or you can look at it as a minor six if the one is E flat. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> So, major thirds. Ooh. Ooh. How about the four? Over a four. Not really. Now, where else does that occur? Add that. Why not just tap with your thumb if you're if you're already Whatever's easier, you kind of have to reduce it to the fewest moves. Ah, it's kind of hard. Can't really get the attack. I don't know, maybe. Now I'm definitely not saving this one. Okay. Sweet picking, I don't really do it. I actually do a slight amount of it, and it's thanks to the great... Robin Ford. So whenever you hear me do this thing in slow dancing, where I'm going like, you know, right? You hear that? Uh, there's this video of me playing through an old two rock, that video, where I'm sort of going. That's the closest I kind of come to sweet picking. So that is actually comes from uh, comes from uh, Robin Ford and Robin Ford would be like And he would go like a, not even that fast. He would do that. So it's called like sort of like borrowing, like elongating one note and making up for it on the next note. So that's kind of the most sweet picking I do. I mean, I can, you know. A little bit, but it's really that. And I can sweet pick sort of with my, with my fingers as well, like the ranking. But yeah, that, that, that Robin Ford stuff, man. If you're, in, if you're into soloing and you really want to get out of the box, Robin Ford is God, man. He's just the best. Just the best. Just the best.
that's a song called Brothers from Robin Ford and the Blue Line. And I got that CD from my middle school library and I took it home and it was like... <laughs> I'll never forget it, and the head is. And the five chord is like a. That. Which was kind of cool looking into these like really cool Eric Johnson things. Right? Now I want to figure it. Yeah. That's what you're doing. But which is... But that's... And I sort of do it with my finger. Sometimes I sit and practice just the, just the ergonomics. I'm not even really playing, oh man, I'm so tempted to try Cliffs of Dover, but then there's just gonna be a clip of me trying Cliffs of Dover called John Mayer attempts Cliffs of Dover, and this is gonna say 1K, and this is gonna say 4K. So. It doesn't do like a, it doesn't do like, hey, it works. It's just some, some open stuff. And what's cool about that, or Johnson stuff, is that he's playing a lot of major stuff. And he's string skipping and it's beautiful. You know? But then there's these moments that Robin Ford does that stuff too, which is kind of fun. Well, I was going to pick up my pick too, but I have a, a thing that I totally ripped off from the Eddie Van Halen guitar. I was like, let me do that thing on it. I do like this other pick better. Anyway, one more question and then I'll let you guys go, although I have got nowhere to be. I think you have to embrace when you've got nothing going on. Uh, admit to the world, you've got nothing going on. Lightning Hopkins, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. The slap pick thing from Stop This Train. Yeah, you know, I didn't invent the slap picking thing, but I definitely popularized it, and it's in a lot of songs, especially on an electric guitar. It doesn't really sound really good. Like, slapping an acoustic guitar works because it's a percussion instrument. You know, the fact that it's hollow and made of wood, it kind of has a conga sound in some way. And on an electric, it just, it just slaps the magnet of the electric guitar, and it, to me, it doesn't sound really good, especially when there's spring reverb on. Now, I'm guilty of having done it, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you wanna get to be a better guitar player? Take out those hits. Because those things are sort of training wheels for, uh, for rhythm. So, for instance, if I was going, uh, Sometimes I'll do that with a drummer because I think it sort of adds to the snare. Or if you do it, yeah, that's what you'll hear. If you, if that stuff you're doing so that you hold yourself to the tempo better, but you should practice just going.
even if you want to take, keep it with your palm, keep the time. You can't hear that. But this stuff, wet, wet, it sort of gets a little strange. chunk of chunks out. Take all the chunk of chunks That was kind of a So this is what I do. I mess up and then I remember it. Shit happens when you're uh, when you go on too long.
goofing off and I gotta go. That was really fun. Thanks for, uh, we, call, we, we kept each other company. And I'll see you later. Bye. That was fun. You gotta talk while I